Warning, the following podcast contains spoilers for Resident Evil, the final chapter. Welcome to the fourth episode of The Masters of Nonsense Presents Surviving the Horror. And you just found yourself knee deep in some nonsense. I'm Rob. I'm Mike. And I'm Matt. And Matt and I went and got and saw Resident Evil, the final chapter this weekend. And uh, we figured that we can round out this series and this challenge of watching all the Resident Evil movies in succession with a, a nice little podcast talking about our experience watching this. But as I said, it was only myself and Matt that saw this. So we figured that we would go ahead and turn the tables over to Mike, who did not go to see the movie um, and did not want to complete this challenge, just so then he can quiz us and ask us everything that he wants to know about the movie and what we thought of it. So I'm going to start off by saying I've never been happier to lose a challenge more in my life than this one. So the fact that that you guys... You had to endure another 90 minutes of this bullshit. Um, it was more than 90 minutes, by the way. More, much more. Was it? Yes. It was about an How hour and 45 minutes. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Well, <clears throat> you two bastards knew what you were signing up for. So as I uh, enjoyed my weekend away from the nonsense that Paul W.S. Anderson presents to the cinematic world, um, I'd like to really ask you guys just a couple of very quick questions because I gave up on this challenge already. So, could you, uh, I guess, summarize, you know, one or two things that you actually enjoyed about the movie? Mm, not really. Yeah, here, here's the funny thing is that, yes, I did see the movie over the weekend, and it's only a couple days removed, and I don't remember anything that really happened in this film. <laughs> well, that's not a good sign. No. Well, I have two things that I could give you. The first thing was that before the movie started... There was a video that they showed from the guys from Rooster Teeth acting like they were in the original Resident Evil game, right? So they had, like, things that covered their faces, and it would show them a camera in the corner of the room, so it was like this fixed camera of the game. That was fucking much better. Five minutes of that was much better than the whole fucking movie, especially with the woman cackling in back of us. Oh, yeah, there was somebody that it sounded like the women laughing in uh, Evil Dead. Yeah, it was like, ha, ha, yeah. ha. Like, was it, like, what the now, fuck? My question is, was it something that warranted that type of laughter? Or was it, did it just make it more awkward? No, it was, it was a funny, you know, one of those like, ah, ha, 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 oh, that was a good one. But she's like, ha, ha. <laughs> and then she was silent throughout the rest of the movie, which was bizarre. Dude, but... we were all silent because we didn't know what the fuck we just watched. <laughs> All right, so Matt, you like you like that intro thing, Rob? What did you like? No, I was gonna actually mention the Rooster Teeth video because it actually was pretty funny and it was done very well. the The guys were just they were funny, but they were acting like they were really in like a haunted or not haunted, but like in a mansion that has a bunch of fucking zombies and monsters attacking them, and it was yep. pretty funny. Yeah, it so was cool. That that was definitely the highlight of the film. Um, <laughs> Wait, so the pre a preview thing was, was the highlight? <laughs> there, were, there were previews that pre- that followed this, so uh, this was just like we got to the theaters too early, and they needed to throw shit on the screen. And that was still better oh. than the fucking movie. Is this like that like thirty minute thing where they give you like the teaser of what's going to be on TNT in the, over the summer? Yeah. No, no, no. Well, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's like, you know, like movie quiz and all that. And then it's like, here's a video from Rooster Teeth. But they actually do some quality stuff. So it wasn't that bad to sit and watch that for a little while. And Uh, then we got to the movie. Yeah, then then the movie happened. Um, I guess the one big highlight, I would say, is uh, Dr. Isaac's there. And I don't remember his real name, but... Ian Glenn. Ian Glenn. Ian Glenn. He was fantastic in this movie because he like i don't know what the hell happened but like the previous time he was on the movie (laughs) in a resident evil movie he like really went out there and tried to make this the greatest movie of all time and his act was just superb i would actually concur with rob because he had some of the greatest lines like he had this one where spoiler alert you had old alice clone Alice and little digital Alice and he's just like and the trinity of bitches has returned or something 
So, so do we think this might be his his Emmy Award winning performance? Oh fuck yeah! And he even has a scene where he tips a glass of scotch, which is just so fucking classy. I actually I enjoyed that scene a lot. The that whole thing came together where it was like he's got you know these superpowers because why not? And he can <laughs> he can basically see into the future and like he can like tactically say like what will happen in the next like if somebody came to attack him he knows how to exactly prevent them from doing what they're doing and of course alice has the same skill so you actually go through this like shawn of the dead like plotting out scene where alice is like this is how i'm going to kill this guy and like looks there's like a glass on the the table there's um at the pen there was a pen or whatever and like she plays out all the scenarios where she can kill this guy and then like he's staring at her the whole time and then it cuts to his brain and then he's doing all that like she's about to do that and he finds a way to murder her from doing that so my question is whatever scene followed that was it in any way as interesting as their precognition scene no not no. really <laughs> You know what the best part, too, is that we didn't just get one Ian Glenn. We got two Ian Glens because he yeah. had a clone. Actually, that was my other favorite part was the fact that clone Ian Glenn <laughs> killed regular Ian Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking, they see each other, and it's just so <laughs> awkward because like, wait, you exist? It's like, yes, you, you are an insect or something, and he just stabs him. Right. And that's the fucking end of it. Because I think that what actually happened was that his real-life clone saw him <laughs> and murdered the original. Was that like a defense mechanism? You see your clone, so you stab it? Yeah, pretty Maybe. much. And the other thing is, I just had a couple of questions. Like, why is Albert Wesker, who was in the games, he has the same outfit? And, like, who does his laundry and who cleans his place? Because it was so clean. It looked like Mike just cleaned the place. <laughs> that have that like hint of bleach smell to it. Yeah, that you know that like it's a serial killer's house because it's fucking too clean, you know. See, the thing that bothers me with him is that he never really interacts with anyone, so he's always just sitting by himself, but his hair is slicked back, and he's in this weird leather outfit. <laughs> but like, does he ever change? Like, does he open his closet and he just has leather pants every like so, leather chaps? So, Matt, this is an important question that I think you can weigh in on. Do you think he stinks? Yes, he probably does. But he has that probably oily stench of, like, he just oils himself and uses baby wipes. So do you think the combination of, like, the, the shellac he puts in his hair and then with the, like, swamp ass from sitting in the president's chair all day? Yep, and, like, you know when you wear glasses too long, you're the, you have to clean your, like, behind your ears? Like, he probably doesn't do that shit, too. <laughs> and he looks like a fucking jacked Val Kilmer. I mean, Val Kilmer these days doesn't look too good. I'm still... I'm not... Really getting your reference with the glasses thing. It's like you know, you're like your your ears. Ears. behind your ears, you know? That's the whole thing. I Well, I don't wear glasses all the time, so I can't really say for sure. So um, I, I've worn glasses for about 20-something years, and I don't have grease behind my <laughs> Well, he's got a lot of grease in his hair. He's got a lot of fucking hair. <laughs> all right. So, well, so you, in summary, you know, the things we liked... You like the, the intro thing, Rooster Teeth or whatever. You like the clones, and you like Ian Glenn. So what didn't you like? Well, well <laughs> Everything. keep it to one or two things that you didn't like. Uh, the other 86 minutes of this film. <laughs> that is so true. It was so just... True. There, it was baffling what they did in this movie because the story was just completely out there and you know i give them credit if they're trying to go like hard sci-fi and do something kind of crazy and weird and potentially lead to other movies in the series yeah that was kind of okay um but just like nobody had a fucking name in this movie or if they did i didn't give a shit <laughs> can you name one character rob one character besides alice no. no. Well, a Claire, because she's been in all the other movies, oh, or yeah, like okay, a couple okay. other movies. Besides Wesker, Claire, and Ian Glenn. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> was, uh, was Grant Hill in it? No. No, wasn't he, in it. He was missing. Leon was missing. Leon, Ada. Yeah. Like, you know, the people that escaped the last movie. You mean the people that were so actually wait, did in they the games? Di- were, did they say they died, or did they just no, not nope. reference them? No. No, the, no idea what the hell happened to so, them. <laughs> So, Rob, you, as a lifelong fan of Resident Evil, a big fan of Leon Kennedy, his last appearance in the cinematic universe is getting shut down by Ada. 
on the yeah. plane. <laughs> well, well, for context, I think the same thing happened. Well, no, he shut down um, Ashley in Resident Evil 4. So I guess this was, you know, his comeuppance after that. That's weird because wasn't she like 18 or 17 or something like that? And it's yeah, like kind of I mean, creepy. Yeah. I mean, he was just fucking creepy all together. And he was creepy in the mo- the other movie, too. Where he's putting his hand in between her legs and she's like, ah, dude, come on. Yeah. Yeah, that's when he got shut down, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> Mike keeps showing pictures of Ian Glenn. <laughs> like the weirdest pictures of him. <laughs> <laughs> speaking, speaking of people who get shut down, Ian Gillen gets shut down a lot in Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, well, that's his thing. <laughs> he knows a lot about that. He probably gave Leon pointers. <laughs> so, um, I guess the other things that I would throw in here is, like, nobody had names. I was really thrown off by, um, I guess this, I was the only one that caught this, because um, I did see... Triple X Return of Xander Cage um, for work. So um, Ruby Rose, who's in there in the in both of those movies, she's like she seems like she's going to be the successor to like you know the badass action star or whatever for like um, Mila Jovovich when she leaves. She was literally playing like a fifteen year old boy in the movie, which was yeah. bizarre. She had like two lines, and then she gets eaten by a fan, and then that's it. Not like a fan, crazy, like a no. real fan. Like like a gigantic industrial fan. She falls into it. Uh, she gets sucked Flies into, into it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So then- to me, I was like, oh, okay. So now they have this person in there. She's probably going to be a pretty big star, and in a few years might as well get her started as being something big here and then it was just like she just disappeared and she was completely pointless well and i mean why why use this shitty movie as the the platform and the springboard for her well that's true well it's supposed to be the end of the movie series so why not go ahead and re-establish somebody else so then they can go ahead and do other things, even if they did spinoffs from movies. This is just like seeing somebody that actually has a lot of charisma on screen and then not doing anything with it. It was just bizarre. And I have so. one more thing to throw in there. Just two little characters. There was a kid who is helping fight the zombies, disappears halfway through a battle. And then there's an Asian guy helping Ian Glenn that happens to know martial arts, which like that ain't racist and then fights <laughs> fucking uh, Mila Jojovich, Alice or whatever. And like, she kicks his ass. Cause you know, she's got superpowers and shit and then like makes him like run with the zombies. And it was just weird and awkward and just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> That's All the right. best way to explain it. So, Let's rapid fire this. Where will you rank this in the the six uh, in amongst the other six movies? So, Matt, what are your top three? My top three are probably oh god, that's hard because that's like <laughs> I mean the first one was all right, but I kind of like the fifth one the best just because it was so bad shit. The first and second one weren't bad, and then the fourth one just the first tw- ten minutes and the last ten minutes. So yeah, the rest I, I, is garbage. Well, <laughs> more garbage. Uh, for me, it's actually, if I'm going to rank them by top three, I would probably put the fifth one, Retribution, top with the original second, and then Afterlife third. Which um, one was Afterlife? The fourth one, that's the one with the Executioner and okay. the like, weird Hollywood manager guy. Oh, so God. Yeah. So there was a part of me that was worried, having not seen the sixth movie, that I'd be missing something. But then even rank in your top three, because my I think mine would be one, five, and two. Oh God! I I will say that this actually does rank higher than Extinction, which was the third movie. Yeah, Extinction was the worst. Extinction uh, was god awful. Okay, so any zipline scenes and because that yep. was consistent. Okay, so we got six movies of ziplines. That's good to know. Yep. And uh, soundtrack score, where would you rank that? Uh, eh, it wasn't that Yeah, good. it was 
pretty uh, pretty dull and not memorable by any means. Uh, <laughs> kind of a shame coming from where the last two movies movies were, where they actually kind of established a new feel to it, like they did in the uh, the original movie. Um, this one was just like a very standard action movie, very boring. Yep, they, All right, so what you're saying? It was the longest movie of the series, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Shitty score soundtrack. Yep. Yep. Shitty story. Yep. Yep. The retcon quite a bit of stuff. Yep. Yeah. They, and they, uh, after watching five of these in succession, and then seeing this, and then you're like, "Wait, what the fuck?" Because none of this makes sense to the rest <laughs> of the story. It, it didn't All right. make any sense. Yeah. So the only potential positive thing of this is that it released in enough time for the Academy Awards that Ian Glenn might get a nod. Yep. And it was the last one. Was we'll it? never see another yeah. one again. Oh, God. Unless, uh, only if Ian Glenn's in it, I'll watch it. <laughs> now, is, he, is Ian Glenn in the new Resident Evil 7 Biohazard game? He is not, unfortunately. He, oh, damn it. Well, fuck that, then. <laughs> Thanks for the spoiler, Rob. Well... <laughs> I didn't want to get your hopes too high here. So, in sum, <laughs> we, you know, well, I'll include myself in this, although I know I didn't see the six movies, but we saw six movies and we've learned nothing new about ourselves or the world, so. Nope. No. Just gained nothing, no new knowledge. Nothing. No. I, I think that, you know, the challenge in itself was, you know, very ambitious to take on. Um, but the one thing that I will take away from it is exactly what I was hoping to get out of it was this was leading up to the release of Resident Evil, the final chapter, as well as the release of Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. And it made me really appreciate the game so much more having gone through so much of that shit. And I don't know if it's just a combination of the fact that it's a very good game and I completed that this weekend. So I absolutely love it. And it's far, far and away one of my top Resident Evil game uh, games in the whole series. Um, really? wow. Yeah. And, you know, what my expectation was, was after seeing these movies, I can only be... I can only be very happy with what they do because I've gone through so much disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, definitely it, it made me appreciate even more what they did in Resident Evil 7. All right. This is, well, this is so okay. sad because it sounds like you went through something horrible to appreciate life, but it's watching fucking shitty movies to appreciate a video game. Yeah, that's that's what life is. Well, the nice thing is, since you tortured Matt and, and me over for the past few weeks with this, we decided the next mini series is going to be us kicking you in the taint until you throw up. So, <laughs> I second that and chopping him too. Oh, okay. right now, that way, are we are we doing this like overhand or slap chops? Both. Like I'll do the overhand, you could do the slap. All right. Just like what the about slap the chop. What about the taint kicking? That we need a steel-toed uh, boot. <laughs> One of those curved boots, too. Yep. Well, like the iron cheek boots. We'll probably yeah, borrow it from him. <laughs> go to the New Jersey and find them. Well, we just did the A to the Z in terms of Resident Evil, so. Yeah, we definitely did. I, mean, I feel like shit after it. <laughs> a so. is in Alice, Z is in zombies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, nice, nice. Yeah, well, I think we can go ahead and close the book on our Resident Evil movie, movie franchise. Thank God. Yes. 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 But I do not want to nice. forget about Resident Evil in general, and I think that you know we can definitely continue to discuss the video game series. Um, I'm very much looking forward to you guys playing and finishing Resident Evil 7 so we can talk about that one, because... There's a lot of shit to say about that. Awesome. The game, I am happy to discuss in any Same way. Here. My goal is to beat one this year. I will never utter anything about these movies again. Same here. Amen. So, so thank you for attempting this challenge, Mike. Thank you for completing it, Matt. And, um... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. That's all that's you get. All you got. <laughs> yeah. <That's it. laughs> I'm fucking out. So... As we said, we close the book on that series, and we'll move on to the next. And as we always say, one one thing about this series is that 
it's been real. It's been good, but it wasn't real good. 